Hello, my name is Richard Weitz. I'm a senior fellow and director of the Center for Political Military Analysis here at the Hudson Institute. Um, today, July 21st, uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is in South Korea. And one of the uh, topics that is not often realized because it's skewered by the conflicts between South Korea and North Korea and other issues is the United States actually has a nuclear dispute with South Korea itself, which I think they'll talk about on this occasion, but will take a while to, to resolve. South Korea has become one of the leading, the world's leading users of nuclear energy. Um, and uh, the, the problem they're running into is they don't have a place to store the resulting nuclear waste. They're about to fill up the temporary storage facilities they have near the reactors, and popular uh, opposition has prevented setting up a long-term waste repository there, or as we know in many other countries, including the United States. What the South Koreans are proposing to do is engage in nuclear reprocessing. Uh, that basically allow, uh, means you take the, re the reactor fuel after it's been used and take out the usable uranium and plutonium, and then you have much less waste to deal with. The problem is that technique can also be used to make nuclear weapons. And there's some speculation that South Koreans also want to enrich uranium, which, as we know from the case of Iran, is all, can also be used to make nuclear weapons. Um, the South Koreans have an agreement with the United States. Uh, what was dated and signed in, in 1974, and but will now expire in 2014, so has to be renegotiated, which allows them to use uh, nuclear materials and technologies that originally came from the United States. And like as in many countries, a lot of their nuclear material and technologies has some as part of it, it came from the United States, and so they need that. Uh, re to renew the agreement to be able to continue to do that. But the United States opposes the use or at least the, con the spread of, the, of such sensitive technologies as, uh, as uranium enrichment and uh, plutonium reprocessing. So there's going to be this dispute is basically we're going to see in many cases of many countries that want to develop civilian nuclear energies. And even if they don't want nuclear weapons, there's a concern how other countries might respond. For example, in the case of South Korea, the fear is that they engaged in, in these sensitive nuclear activities. Well, then it will be much harder to get the North Koreans to give up those, those, that. And the North Koreans use those, uh, particularly plutonium reprocessing, to develop a bomb. Uh, it seems to me uh, a possible solution to these kind of problems might be to multilateralize the fuel cycle. Th what that means is instead of having the South Koreans make their own nuclear fuel and then break it apart and basically be in a position where they could develop a nuclear bomb in a, in a few years if they wanted to, uh, you, ba you ha basically set up these multinational centers in which several countries are involved. And that is basically seen as a way of putting a safeguard uh, against diversion for military use because the other countries would become aware of that. Uh, and I think this might be a solution we might want to consider in the case of Jordan and other countries that are, are trying to develop uh, these sensitive nuclear activities. And ideally, you would at some point bring in Korea and Iran as well. Uh, now, it's, the, the problem is not that many of these countries, or even uh, most of them, would want to, uh, to pursue nuclear weapons. It's just it's a, it would be a very dangerous world if there would be 100 countries that 